Hello, welcome to Davenant Discussions. I'm Brad Littlejohn. I'm here with my friend Bradley Belschner. And today we're going to be uh, asking the question, is capitalism good for the world? Now, Brad, you and I are both uh, kind of come from backgrounds that were sort of pretty hardcore, free market, libertarian capitalist. Um, it's just a common, it, oddly, this, this is a very common thing in, in the conservative Christian circles and reform circles. I think, in America, yeah. Especially, yeah, <laughs> in, in America. This, these, these things often go together. Uh, and I, both you and I have kind of changed a lot in our thinking about this. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not socialists, we're not, we're not big government liberals, uh, but um, we recognize that the free market is not quite as simple as we thought it was. Now, um, what, what things made you change your mind on this? Well, I, I consider myself these days to be uh, in agreement with about 80 or 90 percent of libertarian policies, or what one might call them. But it used to be more like 100%. It used to be, like you said, hardcore libertarianism, where you know, any kind of taxation is theft, and if you just take the government out of it, then the solutions will happen naturally. And I realized it's not so simple. I started to learn more about what's called market failures. Right. Uh, stuff like externalities, where you have two parties making... Uh, or not two parties, one party making a decision uh, that economically affects a party who's not involved. Like this company decides, oh, it will be cheaper for me to pollute instead of to right. safely dispose of this. But that affects right. lots of people who are not making the decision. And the free market is not equipped to deal with that sort of problem. Because, or, the, because the, the product then is priced lower than it should be because it's not actually taking into account that cost that's been... right passed on That's to someone else. That's the competitive else. thing to do. Right. So pure, raw comp competition can not always give you the best result, depending on the circumstance. You have, you have natural monopolies, right. another different kind of example, a, a good one actually, where it might be most efficient for there to be only one provider of a service, like a, a water supply for a city. You don't want people competing, building all sorts of different pipes, because that, that's actually not efficient. It makes right. sense for there to be one set of pipes. And, and if there's only one person doing it, you want to make sure that they can't just charge as much as they want to. You don't want to be some kind in of, charge of the pipes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so there needs to be some kind of uh, regulation. So I started thinking, learning more about exceptions like that, that pushed me out of my comfort zone economically and made me think, okay, maybe competition isn't the answer to everything. And it's not, maybe not so simple. And the linchpin for me was reading uh, Thucydides for the second mm. time, uh, Peloponnesian War, where one of the themes he's emphasizing, it says uh, political realism. He says, the strong do what they will and the weak suffer what they must. And it occurred to me, that's what my view would result in. My hardcore anarcho-libertarianism would be the strong doing whatever they want and the weak suffering whatever happens. And I realized that you needed to have some, something outside governing this market right. or defining it in certain ways and making it an actual free market. Right. Yeah. And that what was, changed for you? Like you came from the same background. Where are you today and how did you get there? Yeah. Well, that, that last point you make was key for me is realizing the notion of, there's this notion that there is a thing called a free market and then there's a thing called a government. And these are sort of two separate entities that both, you know, I don't know, both been there since the world began. And uh, the problems arise when one government inter interferes with the other market. But in reality, I realize that a market is a market depends on a whole structure of rules, which you know any, any libertarian will sort of ultimately recognize this. There's property rights minimally, and property rights are actually not a simple thing. You know, defining exactly the limits of property rights, and especially when we come to complicated things like intellectual property, yeah. there's a whole system of rules that make even make market transactions possible. What, what is a legitimate contract? How, how are contracts enforced? So markets are products of, we don't like to say it, but markets are products of governments. They are products of laws that governments put in place to make and fair exchange vary. possible. It varies from culture to culture too. You might have some cultures that care a lot about land rights, like right. in England, whereas if you're in a desert nomad culture, who cares who owns the land? Right. You care about who owns the stuff you're carrying around. Exactly, you know? exactly. So that, and perhaps tied in with that, was the I started doing you know, a lot of historical study and recognized that 
<laughs> things that I had been taught were sort of like, this is, if you are a Christian, then it leads to these conclusions about political economy. Well, that, that wasn't necessarily the case at all, not, not just the fact that there's, you know, liberal Christians now, but historically, lots of Christians held, actually explicitly argued for the government having very active roles in, in matters of economic justice, and they did so on biblical grounds. Now, we could disagree with their grounds, but there's clearly, there was clearly a lot more room for diversity in the history of Christian political thought than I had realized, um, which just kind of made me recognize that uh, some of the, the black and white terms that had often been framed in were clearly misleading. And, and that, I think, you know, I think the, the other thing that, that I realized um, was it, often these things are framed as, um, by, by one side or the other, as well, um, this is this this sort of, this is just wrong. It's, it's just wrong for the government to be involved in this. Or it's, right, like, or I it's, thought it was actually wrong to have a fire department because that was <laughs> you know doing this violent collection of tax to redistribute it in this collective benefit of fire department. You know that that by the way is yeah. one of the ten or twenty percent of things okay. where I'm not libertarian well, right. anymore. Well, then, that's good. <laughs> I mean, people say this about uh, government health care, for instance. And, but what often happens is when you push the discussion, you realize that what's being framed as a, well, this is just wrong. When you go to scratch and get underneath the surface, you really, then, then the arguments come like, well, we know that this doesn't work. And or, let, me, let me show you how this, uh, this is just bad economically. This is going to cost more. And then you're like, whoa, wait, wait, hang on. So now you're not saying it's absolutely wrong as a matter of principle. You're just saying, in theory, it could be okay. But in practice, it doesn't work. And if that's actually the nature of the dispute, which I find it sort of like 80% of the time a is. A pragmatic dispute. Yeah, 80% of the time it's, it's that, in which case, well, this is something that in principle could be solved by just, you know, better statistics. And so, I mean, we could, and, and if we disagree over it, it's a disagreement over the facts of the case. It's not a, it's not a moral disagreement. Right. Yeah. So you might have people disagreeing over what is or isn't a market failure. But the important thing is that... And, and if there is a market, sometimes there can be a market failure, but the government fixing it would still actually do more harm than good. Right. So it's something to just be left, you know, dealt with. Or, and so it's a question of when is, when on balance and considering the alternatives, does government intervention or restructuring of the, of the market help and when does it hurt? Right, a, a pragmatic question. Yeah. But what we don't want is someone saying, uh, oh, you know, this policy is stealing, and you know, when you're saying something like that, you are accusing a person who supports that policy of aiding and abetting theft. So that that's a <laughs> that's moral weight there, and that's not just oh let's let's work together in government and and compromise and pragmatically figure out what works best in serving the people and the common good. That's no, I can't compromise with you because you're a thief. That's giving it a matter of moral weight, which is unjustified. Right. right. And uh, that's why uh, I think this is a good example of uh, our concern at the Davenant Trust for trying to bring some historical breadth and, and prudential reasoning to bear to recognize that these things do matter, but there's a way to have a more civilized discussion about them than we often do. Yes.